There she flies. Old oh, glory. That kind of hits you where you live, doesn't it? Makes you proud to be an American. Yes, sir. -y. I mean, when you display a flag like that, that's real pride. Look at what I have here. Awareness Ribbon Window Sticker. Easy peel off backing. An American flag and a Support Our Troops yellow ribbon. Hmm, $1.99. Made in the USA. Surprised it wasn't made in China. So, I'll go ahead and deal with backing here. Oh, this is more trouble than I thought. Actually, I have to work a little bit here. There we go. There we go. Peel in place patriotism. And there we are. About as much support as our troops really get these days, isn't it? Remember 9-11? After that horrible day, flags sprouted up everywhere, like weeds after a summer rain. In front of every business, on every front porch, on every car, Suddenly there were flags everywhere. Flags, flags, and more flags. Suddenly, everyone was a patriot. Well, I hate to say it, but most of them were patriots only to the extent that it was convenient. Sure, they could fly a flag, but they couldn't be bothered to display it properly, to take it down at night or when it rained, or to replace it if it got dirty or tattered. After about a year, some of those same flags had been flying night and day through wind and rain, and they were looking pretty tattered. They looked like shit. Oh, sure. Some people were sincere in their patriotism. Some people lined up to join the military. Some people took up donations and sent care packages to the troops. And some people planted victory gardens and collected scrap metal. Oh, wait. That was World War II. Because let me tell you, folks, the greatest generation, this one ain't. In the 1940s, people bitched about FDR's socialist programs, some of the same ones that they still bitch about today, like Social Security. But back then, people felt they had a patriotic duty to pitch in. You couldn't draft the rich people, because they were mostly too old to go and fight, but you could draft their money in the form of taxation, and they went along with it. Nowadays, it's not the same. You can join the army if you want to, if you don't have other priorities. And if you don't want to go, well, that's okay. Somebody will go fight that war for you. And it would be criminal, downright criminal, to ask anyone, especially the wealthy, to pitch in and help pay for it. Tax cuts in a time of war. How utterly preposterous. And yet that's what they got, thanks to Chicken Hawk Bush and a Republican Congress who were more concerned about their billionaire benefactors than they were about the posterity of the nation. Now, the country is sinking in debt while the fat cats are swimming in cash. All the jabber monkeys in the right-wing propaganda mills want to piss and moan about entitlements but they won't talk about the white elephant in the room, which is the defense budget and the war debt. Now this isn't about trickle-down economics. Although I will say this about that. Those Bush-era tax cuts have been in place for damn near a decade. If they're so great, then why are we just now digging out from under the rubble of a collapsed bubble economy? Why isn't the stuff trickling down? But that's beside the point. My point is, that if conservatives stay true to their principles, if you want something, you pay for it. If it's true of entitlement programs, it ought to be true of wars. So come on, rich guys. It's not like you're going to miss a meal or anything. Lots of lower and middle class people have given up their lives, limbs, and sanity to fight this war that you fat bastards have benefited the most from. 
It's not just that you have more money, more stuff, but you have more power. You have more representation in Congress than anyone. So come on, share the sacrifice for the good of your country. If you fat cats had sacrificed something to help pay for it, you'd be concerned about waste and corruption in the Defense Department. You would have cared about the plane loads of cash that disappeared in the hands of the Coalition Provisional Authority. And you would have worried about the untold sums of money being paid to war profiteers with no-bid contracts. And if you really sacrificed for the good of your country, you could look someone like me in the eye and call yourself a patriot. Or you could take the easy way out. Just put a cheap-ass flag pin on the lapel of your hand-tailored suit. Yep. Looky there. There's another one. That makes you really proud, don't it? Proud to be an American? Proud to be a Texan. See how vivid the colors are. Just kind of stirs you up, doesn't it?